Uh, hi everyone, uh, we are looking at the discussion on this topic income taxes. Uh, we would like to spend some time today talking about, uh, for example, let's say to, to begin with the, an example of uh, a startup company which has a lot of losses in its uh, initial period of operations. And think of it like this, uh, when, you, when you talk about a startup, for example, there are, there are initially losses, they would increase uh, you know, even farther. Uh, because of uh, the scale coming up and eventually it would reach a break even and then you look at the profitability. But uh, you observe that while, while you are incurring a lot of losses in today's time because there is a lot of compete, you want to uh, reach out to the market, you want to create a penetration, you want to create a demand for your product and you are spending a lot of money and, and that results into operational losses. Uh, these losses can be huge and, and, and well, you, you have some a considerable amount of losses today and eventually maybe maybe a few years down the line you 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 reach the break even point and eventually you start making profit so effectively when i look at a, a usual tax jurisdiction so you would be allowed to carry forward these losses to be offset against the future profits okay which means that if if there is a profit in the future you necessarily do not pay taxes because you already have some losses that you carry forward Okay, so that is that is how you start looking at that these losses would have a tax advantage in future. Okay, so when you have a tax advantage in future, should you recognize it today? That is something which we want to talk about as a part of this concept. Even more importantly, to what extent? That is something which we really want to understand better here. Okay, so think of it like this. I'm saying that, uh, uh, for example, Amazon as a company. invests a significant money in, in its Indian operations. Okay, so Amazon India, they, they invest a huge amount and let's say uh, since their objective is to build an e-commerce uh, website and uh, or e-commerce market and, and, and there's a competition already in place, Walmart through its, its subsidiary called as Flipkart and, and a couple of more players here and there. So they are, they are competing with, 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 the, with Amazon. Okay, so, so let us say in, in the year one, and, and let's look at these numbers like this, and, and let's take two more years here, year six and year seven, and let's even take year eight, for example, okay? So, so we say that Amazon India is, is, is spending considerably on its marketing, on, on building its, uh, you know, uh, reach to the, to the customer. So it may, it may have a loss of, let's say, Let's let's give it a number of hundred million dollars. Okay, in the year two, so this is a loss, by the way. Okay, in the year two, this increases further because there is the very aggressive kind of marketing which is being done. And let's say this reaches out to five hundred million dollar, and in year four, it it is expected to go, let's say two hundred million dollar, and in year five, it it's about to reach a break even so let's let's give it 50 for example and year 6 we look at a positive number of uh, let's say 150 and uh, year 7 we look at a positive number of 400 and this becomes 600 million okay something like that okay so so what you what you observe here is that when you look at the cumulative values the cumulative losses so this is 100 this is 400 now which is 100 plus 300 or 100 plus 300 here this becomes 900 million this becomes 1.1 billion of course so 1100 million is something that we want to write and this becomes of course 1.15 billion or 1150 million and this now becomes 1000 because you are effectively making money and uh, here you have of course 600 million as a net loss and this becomes zero okay and of course you will have probably in, the, in this sequence you will have more profits arising in let's let's give it a number again uh, 700 billion for example okay and we say cumulatively you are making a profit of 700 million at the end of year 9 
right? Now, now think of it like this, what is happening? Uh, in, a, in, a, in a loss environment, you're not paying taxes, right? And, and so far, up to year five, you have been making losses, okay? Year six, you, you, you breach the break-even uh, line and, and you have actually earned a profit, but you have sufficient losses from the past that will be adjusted against this profit. So in a way, you're not really paying taxes up to year eight because, well, assuming that you can, you are allowed to carry forward all these uh, losses for, for, for a sufficient period of time, you are saying that, well, I'm, I'm, I'm expected to make a profit, but I will have a benefit of not paying taxes. So there would be a deduction available for me in future because I'm able to carry forward my past losses. So, so what are we saying is that currently, so today there is a loss, the today's loss will result into a tax benefit of future. A future tax benefit would arise because of this tax loss today, assuming that the entity is allowed to carry forward these losses in this case. Okay. So all we are trying to bring here is the thought process that if, for example, we have such a kind of arrangement, such a kind of jurisdictional uh, norms where such losses can be carried forward against future profits to that extent you shall recognize a deferred tax asset okay so in this example if i were to presume if i were to bring that perspective here that the carry forward of losses can be done for let's say up to six years okay so it simply means that if i'm making a loss in year one and till the time i have a loss up to year seven or up to year six for example that should not worry that should not be a trouble for me from tax purposes because i can carry forward this loss even up to year seven, assuming I can, I can take it forward for six more years there. Okay. But then if I say I'm allowed to carry forward my losses up to only three years, then things will change considering those same losses there. I'm saying that in my year one, there is a loss of hundred. I can adjust this loss of hundred for three more years from year one. What does it mean? It means that if in the year four, I have a profit up to 100 million, I can offset that 100 million profit with carry forward of this loss of 100 million from year one itself. Okay. But then if you observe here, till year five, there is only a loss. I'm just making losses. Of course, they're reducing with time eventually, but there's a loss straightforward. And if I look at this particular clause, if, if my jurisdiction suggests that I can only carry forward my losses up to three years of time, this loss does not give me any advantage in future because after year four, this loss cannot be adjusted anymore. It would just be not permitted to carry forward any farther. Okay. Likewise, in year five, also I have a loss, which means that even this loss is not going to give me any future tax deduction or future tax benefit. However, if I look at year three's loss, which is 500 million, against that in year six, I have a profit up to 150, which means that I have a $150 million future tax deduction available. As in, 
for a future profit of 150 against this 500 there is a future reduction available only to the extent of 150 which means that on this amount i can create a deferred tax asset using the tax rate as applicable okay that is the entire context that we are trying to build with the help of this paragraph of the standard which says that when there are insufficient taxable temporary differences relating to the same taxation authority and the same taxable entity it's more technical we are simply talking about one entity with the taxation authority and there are insufficient taxable temporary differences the deferred tax is asset is recognized the dta is recognized to the extent it is probable that the entity will have sufficient taxable profits in this case we are using the number of 150 relating to the same authority and the same entity in the same period as the reversal of the deductible temporary differences or in the periods into which such losses can be carried forward or even backward so some jurisdictions do permit a carry backward of losses as well so make it simple for yourself if we say that if you see this kind of a instance you can very well say well if my law suggests six years my carry forward of losses up to six years i'm saying that this hundred million can be utilized against any future profits up to year seven because after the end of year one there are six more years the moment i see a profit i will adjust it against that which means that if i look at this hundred negative there is a 150 million dollar profit here so i know that against this loss i'm not paying tax on this profit to the extent of 100 so i can create a deferred tax here itself okay as far as year two is concerned against 300 i have a 400 profit against year three against 500 million loss i have a 600 million profit so i can create and i keep on creating deferred tax assets to the extent they are probable to arise that is something which is an important terminology it is probable that the entity will have sufficient taxable profits in the same period as the reversal of the deductible temporary difference or in the periods in which you can carry forward or backward those losses to create those deferred tax assets for yourself okay so it's not really technical but it's the language of the standard which sometimes becomes difficult to observe but here it should be a bit more straightforward approach that has to be followed by us right the second part of the paragraph is again not challenging it says that or there is an opportunity with respect to a tax planning available to the entity that would result into a taxable profit in the appropriate period so even if i don't foresee any such profitability but there is a visibility i have with respect to creation of some tax planning opportunities some investments some kind of uh, let's say you know uh, uh, tax savings in a legitimate manner if i can do and accordingly i would have those taxable profits rising in future i can again create my deferred tax asset to the extent i'm uh, i'm seeing that probably a probable amount arising in the future there okay so that is something that you want to kind of consider as a part of the requirement of the standard in this case All right so thank you very much good day take care bye bye